Welcome, followers of the channel. Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator. Now, eagerly anticipated, much wanted. You've seen the thumbnail. What's, what's today's video going to be about? You know what it's going to be about. You've seen the thumbnail. I want to touch on this bad boy. Do you know what it is? It's the Greco or Greco, Greco, Greco ultra quick shot. Now this is a battery powered airless sprayer and I'm going to show you how easy this is to set up, spray Doris the door and do you know I'm going to do another video on cleaning it out because that's a whole new ball game for cleaning out but today I want to touch on discussing this, what I think to it and should you get one? The question will be, should you buy one? And as we go through this video, I'm going to give you a few um, examples when and where you would be using this. So give us a couple of seconds and I will be back and let's get into this video. Okie dokie, let's get straight into this. Now, before you start saying Phil must be earning loads of money because he's bought one of these, I haven't bought it. I borrowed it from a friend who says, Phil, I've got one. I know you want to try one. I know you want to do a video on it, clearly, because everything is content. But he's loaned me this just to go through it quite simply and easily in layman's, yeah, in layman's terms to try and help you understand what this bit of kit is because it's not an HVLP. This is Greco's Greco. It is a proper airless sprayer albeit it runs off a battery and there is limitations to it. So that's what I'm going to get into now and let's talk you through it. What do you get in the kit and what can you do with it? So let's, let's get into this now. Right, let's talk about this. You get a lovely bag with it. It's a very expensive bag because this kit, we're in the UK and we, we're looking about £1,200 just shy of a thousand pounds plus VAT. But what do you get for 1200 quid when it comes to a portable battery operated airless sprayer? Let me show you. Right, clearly you get battery, a battery. You get two batteries and you get the DeWalt batteries. One's in the machine, we get a spare and you get a charger. Now, how long do these take to charge? They're probably about an hour and a half. I've charged his battery up and it was charged within half an hour. Thankfully, it was part charged anyway. But these are the X, well, this is the XR and it's the 18 volt battery. And as easy as that, you've got portable power. So let's start with the batteries. You get two of these, you get a charger, go straight into the back. Can't be any harder or simpler than that, can it? Right, what else do you get? In the kit, there's no, if you're used to traditional spraying, and I'm gonna bring my proper spray gun out. If you're used to a spray gun like this, there'll be a filter in the, in the gun. There's not a filter in this gun. The filter is actually in the paint pot, the paint cup, whatever you wanna call it, and it goes at the bottom there. Now you get two, you get a 60 and a 100. Now the 60 is obviously the more open, I'll show you that, it's the black one. It's the more open gorse, can you see that? Again, compared to the 100, focus on me, which is finer. This is what you'd use for a fine finish. And because I'm gonna demo today using fine finish spray tips, I'm gonna put that in now. That just seats straight into the bottom of the the paint cup. I'm going to call it a paint cup, paint pot, paint cup. That just sits nicely in there quite tightly. Now you're going to say, Phil, what about this paint pot? I'll come on to that in a bit, but this does uncouple. There's a little button on the side. You can turn it, oh, I need two hands. You can turn it and that's what you'd remove from the base. But we're not talking about that yet. That's more to do with cleaning. When you put it in, make sure you turn it and make sure it clicks into place. Yeah, we clicked into place there. No, we're not. Yes, we are, we won't click. Right, so that's that. 
There's a lid for that as well. And if you notice, sorry I'm jumping about, I want to get as much information as I can under 30 minutes. There's a little rubber bung there, which is your air bleeder valve, shall we call it. And that, when you're in transit and moving about, put the lid on, put the little, can you see that? Snaps into there, but when you're spraying, open it to let air through so it doesn't vacuum and create a blockage. So that's that. Right, let me just put that onto the pot. Let's just talk about this gun. It's got a slinky snake. The gun is on a, let's call it a six foot hose, 1.8 metre hose. How handy is that? You haven't got loads of hose that you're going to be tripping about. You've got no power, power cord either. But this gun, don't think of it as a gun like this. You know, at the end of the day, when you've probably had enough spraying and you're coming back the next day for spraying, I might, or some people, drop it into a bucket of water to keep it clean and also keep it softened up so it doesn't dry. Does that make sense? Just put it into a bucket of water. Don't do that with this. This is an electronic gun. This is the all singing, all dancing, state-of-the-art Greco electronic gun that is one touch spray. There is a system in there that's more complicated than I can actually explain that there is no need for a clean shot on the end because this will shut off the trigger and stop any spitting. Literally, it shouldn't be any spits from that at all. If I can, let me just, there's a lock-in button. I don't think you can see it. On, on, on and off. If I turn it off, I've got a bucket down here. I will just spray into that, you'll hear it. Can you hear that? Straight into it. I'm back. So this shouldn't create any spits when you're doing your fine finish work. Right, jumping on, moving forward. These are the Rack X guards for the tips. And this is a standard guard. This, you've seen these blue ones before. These, I've got these, are all interchangeable. They'll all fit onto it. So if you have already got Greco stuff, it will fit onto there. And your spray tips will also fit onto there like normal. You say something? Yeah, you did say something. Right, let's just talk about your limitations. Your spray tip size. And if you wanna know about spray tip sizes, it's there, a bit more in depth is there. But the lowest, smallest number you can go to is a, an eight. So that's a 0 0.008 orifice size. And the maximum it will take is a 16, which is a 0 0.016 orifice size. If that's not making sense to you, please watch that video. But those that know and have probably already got other spray equipments, don't go any lower than an eight and don't go any higher than a 16. What? Can you spray emulsion with it? Yes, you can spray emulsion with it. You'd probably need to thin it down slightly, a bit more than usual, and use, because I'm gonna tell you what comes in the kit, you get a 410 spray tip, a fine finish spray tip, and you also get a 514. So that would be the one that they would be pushing you towards for spraying emulsion. So, so long as you can get your emulsion thinned enough to go through this machine and spray with a 514 or a 16, if you've got 16s in your toolbox, and I'm pointing down to my toolbox down there, but in the kit, you get a 410 and a 514, and you could spray a mist coat and spray small ceilings and small areas with that, with the emulsion. If you wanna be doing fine finish work like doors, I hate the word trim, but some people in America will probably be watching. I'm talking about trim and woodwork. You would possibly be looking at the 410. And as I'm going to demo today, I've got my spray equipment stuff at the side of me. I'm going to be spraying with a 310. I might possibly try a 308, which is your lowest stroke, smallest orifice that you could possibly go to on this. So are we cramming a load of information? Yes. The next thing I can hear somebody shouting, PSI, the maximum PSI that you've got on this is 2000 PSI, which is what, about 138 bar. Am I correct? 138 bar. You also want to know about the weight. This isn't a heavy bit of kit. This is coming in at 6.4 pounds, which um, old money or new money, 
2.9 kilo. So that's not that's not too heavy. Don't forget that pot holds about a litre of paint. So if I say, what's that? I've got a pot of paint there, that's a litre. You would possibly get almost a litre's worth of paint in there, but you probably wouldn't fill it up to the top. You might only go to 750, 500, 750. That is the downside. If you are doing some ceilings, you may be filling this up more than you require or more than you want to be doing. But saying that, this is a lightweight machine. It comes, and you probably already know, and I've not mentioned it earlier, comes with a belt holder and a, a nice belt, and it clips onto your, I can't do it, clips onto your hip. Oh, there's, there's a joke in there about being a cowboy, but it clips onto your hip there, and um, away you go spraying. Let's just give you a bit of a nugget of information on this. If you're thinking that you want to spray spindles and you've probably got an HVLP or you've already got um, airless, do you know what? How easy is this to go around somebody's house inside doing fine finish work with something that's not got hoses trailing about? I love my QT5 Stage 5 HVLP. I've got control with it. But the downside is those nasty hoses that seem to be all over the place when you want to be moving about. But this eliminates that and it also gives you the maneuverability that you can spray up, down, left, right, side to side. So have we touched on all of that? Are we understanding it? It's quite a simple bit of kit. It's quite a simple bit of kit. When the knob's upright, that's for priming. So once you get your paint in there, you'd release that little grub on the top and start, I'll use the word spray, you press the trigger to prime the pump. Once you've been priming it for about 10 to 15 seconds and you're getting a, a spurt of water out the end or a bit of paint, you're going turn it to spray, point it straight into your bucket like you've been doing with the priming, turn it to spray, do another 15 seconds, you'll start getting the paint through the hose, through the gun, and you're ready to spray. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this guard off because I don't wanna spoil my friend's tips. Taking that off, easy as that. Do me usual, don't forget, I've told you before. A Little bit of Vaseline, just around those threads around there. You're not putting loads on, it's not gonna contaminate the paint. This will then allow you to nicely put your spray guard on. Let me put my Vaseline down. Put your spray guard on. And that is virtually ready to spray now and put your spray tip in. Position where you want the spray tip and I'm gonna go with 310 and uh, get some paint out. See you in a moment. While I've got your attention, you know, if you've got any Tri-Tech guards and tips, I've just picked this out of my box, you can also use the Tri-Tech because it's the same thread size that you can interchange spray tips with the spray guards, housings, whatever you want to call it. So uh, bear that in mind if you've already got tips from other brands. Right, everybody, you want to know what paint I'm using. I've got some, because you know what I've got for sample paints. I've got some Everol Aqua, um, 40, this is Ticarilla. It's warm in here, because in my studio it's warm. The paint's quite warm. I've also got a heater just warm in the air as well. And I've literally only put a splash of water. I've got about that much paint in there. Got about that much paint. I've just literally put a splash of water just to help it um, spray. If it needs any more water, I will add it. So let's get that on there. I'm gonna put my lid on. So I've tipped some paint in. I'm gonna put my lid on. And again, I pour a little bit of Vaseline around that rim thread. Even though it's plastic, it just helps it put it in and out. Right. The little bung is out and I've got it turned to prime. I've got my spray tip in now. This is my own spray guard and my own spray tip. And I'm just gonna bring a bucket up. I've got a slot bucket, I put slops in. 
Now I just want to show you how easy is this to get priming. So I'm taking the lock off. I won't put a mask on for this. I'm not in the spray position with the spray tip, but I'm going to just start priming, waiting 15 seconds for that to prime through. You see water coming out? Priming, you see? And I've got paint coming through there already. So that is ready to spray. Right, my next thing I want to tell you about, I'm going to put it on lock again. There is no pressure gauge like a traditional turning up and turning it down. But on the back of the gun, it's from one to 10. Now, one will be the lowest pressure and 10 will be the maximum. And if we're talking about maximum, that will be looking at the 2000 PSI. I've tried this before and I've started on four, gone up to five, gone up to six, and when I've sprayed, I've come back down to five. And if you probably watched all the videos, you'll probably see that everybody's spraying at about five, but you have got the tolerance of moving that lower than five or going a bit more than five if you require. What you've got to get is a nice spray fan pattern with a bit soft edges, without tails, with even coverage. So. Dead easy, dead easy. I'm gonna go with the, I'm gonna go with the five. I'm just turning my eye spray tip to spray. And I'm just gonna see how it comes out into the bucket. Right, I've turned it to spray. We've got paint coming through from prime. Yeah, There's plenty coming out there. I'm just gonna turn it down a bit to three. Gone to two, it's not right. Three, four, four don't sound bad. Put my lock on, let's get a piece of sample card to try it. I've still got this on my workbench in front of me. Right, bit of Cortex sheet, bit of an old one. Let's bring my spray stuff around. Again, I've got my mask ready, but while I'm talking to you, I can't wear a mask. Let's just show you what I mean by this. If I set that down to one, turn off the guard. Yeah, right, this is on one. Can you see that? Don't forget when you spray, keep about 12 inches away, keeping even up and down. Don't be, don't be going like that. Keep even top to bottom. That's on one, I'm gonna turn it up to three. Can you see that? It's getting better. And I think my mix of paint is about right. It's thin enough to get nice atomization and that would flow out, but three isn't enough. Let's go to four. That's not bad at four. Let's just go to five. Let's go to six. It's pumping it. Go to seven. You get through some paint at that. I'm not going to do eight, nine. I'm just going to go straight to 10. Don't need it as much as that. Bring it back down. Let's go back down to five and see how we were with that again. Can you see that? Let's do a bit here. Can you? We've got a nice even fan pattern there and we've got soft feathering. Call it feathering feathering on the edges. So I'm going to stick with five. I'm going to spray Doris the door at five. I'm going to move that. I'm just going to put it back on lock. I'm just going to put a little um, filter mask on for this. So we're at five. I'm happy with that consistency of paint. And I'm going to go top to bottom keeping 12 inches away. And can you see my mouth moving? No. Can you remember the days when we had to wear these for our own health and safety? Can you remember that? What I'm going to say to you is, if you've got a door to spray, this is ideally going to get a lovely finish. If you've got a garage door to spray, you're going to get a lovely finish with this. What about your staircase spindles? you probably drop down to a 210 tip or even a, 
what should we say a 208 possibly but this is going to save you a lot of time isn't it right we're ready i'm going to do part the door with the 310 and i'm going to do swap it 308 Do you know what? That is lovely. I really like that. That's dead easy to spray. I'm just swapping my tip over because I might find I need to drop my pressure down. So we now want a 308. I'm dropping my pressure down to three. Let's. Try that. Four and a half, I'm going to go. Four and a half to five. Let's see what we like. I'm going to hold that now. And there we have it. Put it on lock. I'm nearly out of paint, so that must have timed it right. That 308 gave a lovely soft spray pattern. It also wasn't putting as much on as what a 310 would do. So if you've got doors and woodwork, you probably would want to just thin your paint slightly and do it with uh, a 308, 208, something on that sort of scale. Back to doing your ceilings. If you were doing the ceilings with this, your 514, you might get a 5, I've got a 516 Tri-Tech that I use for ceilings. I thin my paint out and <laughs> I thin my paint down and on my big sprayer, I would be spraying around about 1200 to 1500 PSI with a, a 5.16 and spraying something like AR2, Ticarilla's Anti-Reflex 2, depending on your temperature of your paint and the temperature of the room as well. But around about 1500. I'm not sure what four and a half to five would be on that. If we're going by 2000 at number 10, we've halved it. So we're around about that thousand, probably, 1100 spraying psi but to me that is lovely i can see where i've got more paint on being a 310 compared to the 208 and i've just got a bit well i've run out of paint just there that is looking really nice i'm really happy with that i'm going to say to you if you've got the chance to try one of these if you've got the chance to if you're fortunate enough to be in the market for buying a sprayer please consider one of these because this is one of these, I've got, let's call it an all-rounder. This will get you doing interior, small jobs, nothing big. If you want to be doing big, let's call it blasting out new builds with, let's move that out of the way. If you want to be blasting out new builds with wash coating, don't buy one of these. But if you're on a private job or something that suits spraying your garage door, spraying some internal doors. If you've got some railings or something outside, you might say to yourself, I tell you what, one of these is be ideal for you. 1,200 pounds. I spray a lot of water-based paint and it's as safe as houses, safe as houses. But if you're spraying oil-based and flammable materials, please read the instructions on this kit because it comes with an earthing wire. Don't get scared about it. It's to stop static buildup in the hose and through the sprayer. You earth it off a little screw underneath there and plug it in. It's in the kit, but it's there for your own safety because there is chance of explosion. Please read the instructions. Earthing kit. Flammable, solvent-based paints. Water-based paints, you're fine. You saw the thumbnail and it is very true. Speculate to accumulate. 
11, 1200 pounds on one of these and it saves you time on a job. You will be charging out for painting, brushing a roller. Clearly it would be, hopefully. But if you've got a sprayer that can do the same job quicker, you should be charging a little bit more or at least you'll be saving time. If you're not into spraying and brighting, you should be charging really for a brush and a roller application, but saving time and making up time using a sprayer. So on that note, I'm not gonna show you how to wash this out because it'll be another video, but I will say this is very easy to wash out because all I'm gonna do is put water into that pot, flush it through as if I was spraying until the spray starts coming clear. Once it's clear, I know it's got no paint left in the hose. And then what you do, and I'll show you on the next video, put a bit of pump armor through it. Look after your spray equipment. Look after your spray equipment, it'll look after you. And on that note, thanks for listening. See you on the next one, cleaning it out.